Got a 2017 Lincoln Continental black label. Do front brakes. All right, <clears throat> so all you need to do is jack it up, support it properly, and uh, remove your front tires. And then what you want to do is you want to remove this anti-rattle spring here. So what you do is you put a stick a screwdriver in here like this. Just go like that, pry it up a little bit, grab hold of it, and bring it down this way. Same operation going back together. Then you want to get yourself 11 millimeter. Nope, but first you need to remove these uh, slide pin caps. There's two of them. There's one here and there's one down here. And these go over the boots for the slide pins to keep the dirt out. Then you need to get yourself an 11 millimeter Allen. 11 millimeter Allen. Okay. And stick it in there and remove the slide pins. And this is the slide pin. Okay. If you don't have an 11 millimeter, then next best thing is a 55 Torx. Because around the side of it is an 11 millimeter. I don't have a 11 millimeter Allen, so next best thing I'm going to use that. So remove both of those pins. And then now you're whole caliper will be loose okay so what you want to do is grab hold of it slide it out set it up on top and uh, we'll go from there if you got a bungee cord get the bungee cord ready so you can wrap it around your strut spring and get it onto your caliper to hold the caliper from dropping down to the ground okay i removed the caliper and this outer pad stays in here Careful that it doesn't fall out and land on your foot. I always like try to wear steel toe shoes. Okay, so you got your caliper. Put it up here on top. Leave that pad in there because we're going to use that pad to help push the pistons in. You can use a uh, C clamp to go around this way and push it in, or you can use your ratchet type. I'll show you that in a minute. Next, you want to do is remove your caliper bracket that's held on by two 18 millimeter head bolts right here and those are on the inside here there's one down here along right here and there's one up here okay now I'll, what i always do too is put a big pair of vice grips put it on one of my studs to hold my rotor straight i just grip it on there just a little bit just to hold the rotor and that's it okay so you remove those two bolts and then you can remove your caliper bracket okay here's the caliper bracket what you want to inspect on it is right here where the pad rides make sure it's not worn out right here it's got a little a divot if they get really bad then you should go ahead and replace them but sometimes you can clean them up a little bit with a die grinder so you need to get a die grinder with a disc on I use an angle die grinder and a disc to clean them up. I don't, I'm not trying to remove a lot of metal. I just want to clean these up. Okay. Then you get them cleaned up, brush them down. Then you want to put some uh, brake lube on the surface where the pads ride on here. And then next you need to do is uh, push your pistons in on your calipers. But you want to inspect your calipers, make sure they're not leaking. If they're, make sure the boots aren't wet. And also you want to look for cracks or uh, tears in your boots. If you have any of that, you need to replace it. Okay. Let's see. And this is the type that I got also. Sometimes they don't work because it's too fat and won't fit in there. So I have to use my... Uh, C clamp. Okay, pistons are pushed back in. All right, get them all the way in. Use your old brake pad. Also, you want to do, keep an eye on and on your your hose. Make sure it's not restricted. And if it's restricted or pinched, it will make pushing your pistons in a little bit harder. Okay. So set that aside for now. 
What you can do is use a bungee cord, bungee cord it up to your spring, or if you got a, one of the hooks, you can use your hooks. I always lose these, always leave them in there. So we'll hang that, and then we'll remove our rotor. Okay, if your rotor won't come off, it's bonded on there, you need to spray some penetrant around it and smack it around on the rotor. If you're replacing the rotor, you can smack the rotor surface. If you're gonna reuse your rotor, then do not smack the rotor surface. You can smack the rotor around the stud area, try not to hit the studs. All right, so you get your rotor off, and what you need to do is clean up the surface here. This is a stepped hub. This is higher than here. Okay, we need to clean them up. Do not try to remove any metal. You just want to clean them up. And then what you want to do is put in a fine film or anesthes on it. Okay, these have been done before, so it doesn't look too bad. And I'll show you on your bracket. I'm talking about the humps where they get worn. See, and just clean them up and you can see the low spots. Okay, see it? All right, so what I'll do is clean them up, put some paint on them, let them dry, and then I'll put my brake lube on them when I'm going together. Okay, got your caliper on. Make sure you clean it with soap and water or degreaser, glass cleaner, some brake clean a little bit on there to remove the shipping oil. Do not use brake clean on your brake pads. Now all you need to do is put your brake caliper bracket in there. Got the two bolts, 18 millimeter head ones. You can torque those to 76 foot pounds. Before you put it on there, put your sill glide on there on the mounting surfaces where the pads ride. Just check out where your pad fits in there and put it on there on this flat surface here and there in the backside. Okay, now you got this torqued. So now what you need to do is you got your caliper cleaned up. All right. So what you need to do now is put some sill glide inside where the slide pins go. Put some in there, put a little screwdriver in there and whirl it around. Same thing, or try to get your finger in there with some sill glide in there. And clean up your surfaces on here and on your pistons. If you wanna put some uh, stuff on there to help keep your pads from vibrating or whatever, put them on there, put a little bit on your pistons so they don't get on your boots and that's it. Okay, so you got the bracket torque done. Now you need to put your outer pad on and put your inner pad in. It's got the springs, you need to start the bottom spring first and then push in on the top two springs and then you push that pad on there. Okay, you got your calipers on. Put the slide pins in there, snug them up and then you wanna torque them to 23 foot pounds. And then don't forget to put the little caps back on. I always forget. Put the caps back on. Okay, and now you can put your anti rattle clip in. Get it started here in the bottom first, like that. Stick it in there like that. Bring it on over, get the top latched in, and then get a screwdriver and push that in that way. And also push this back down in there also. What I mean by a screwdriver, and then take it like that and push it in there, okay? And once you get that in there, make sure it's pushed in and the same thing for the bottom. And make sure those are in there. Might be nice to put a little sill glide right there. Okay, there you have it. I used the uh, vice grips to hold my rotor flat and also keep it from falling off. Just down there that loose, okay? Do the other side exactly the same way. And also another thing is when you're putting your caliper back on, make sure this hose is not twisted. Make sure it's a nice clean flow. You do not want it twisted. I see too many of them that are twisted. Okay, and that's it. So next thing you need to do is put your tires on, torque your lugs to 140 foot pounds, and then uh, Lower down to the ground, go inside the vehicle, start it, push the pedal to the floor a couple times, make sure you got a decent firm pedal. And then always, you always wanna double check your fluid level, so you wanna open up your hood, 
and you want to find your master cylinder it's usually on the driver's side over by the cowl which is by the windshield and there's a little cap you want to remove the cap inspect it tap it off if needed and then put the cap back on make sure you wipe the cap off before you remove it because sometimes dirt falls in there and then just go inside and double check to make sure you got a good firm pedal before you put it in drive or reverse because if you do not do that procedure and you put in drive or reverse you're not going to have no brakes until you pump that pedal five to six times so you don't want to do that all right so that's it that's how you do front brakes if i helped you out that's awesome hopefully you can help me out by subscribing and i appreciate it thank you